WWDC 2020 keynote left me dumbfounded. So we decided to keep my thoughts in my head until we could try out the updates. I could always 14 ourselves. The public beta for iPadOS 14 is out. It's been out for a while now. Proceed to install it at your own risk. Remember, back up your iPad before installing this beta software, just in case you don't like it and want to go back to iPadOS 13. Just wanted to comment on iPadOS 13.5 before we start. iPadOS 13.5 has been very buggy and it has affected a lot of applications and a lot of users. For those of you guys that have lost your notes, my heart goes out to you. The first thing I noticed on installing iPadOS 14 was the widget. My edit button at the bottom is gone. It comes and goes, and I'm sure that's a bug. Generally, iPadOS 14 has made widget a bit dysfunctional, so I won't be playing around with it much. Hopefully, our developers can start updating their widgets for iPadOS 14. I can't drag my favorites to pin here. It seems at the moment, only Apple's widgets are the ones optimized for this. I can't move my widgets around to change their order, so that's been a bit difficult. Still excited to try out different sizes for our widgets and try customize how our widgets look. Because I don't want any of these Apple apps in my widgets, Smart Stack hasn't been very useful for me either. Smart Stack is the option to have multiple apps grouped under one widget. When you turn on Smart Rotate, the top widget automatically changes to display the most relevant widget you need depending on your location, time, and activity. This could be very useful. The next important feature, of course, that we're excited about is Scribble. Could Scribble potentially make keyboards on the iPad obsolete? We'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Scribble is an OCR or handwriting recognition technology that allows you to handwrite directly into text fields. The conversion happens on your device, so your handwriting stays private. And because this doesn't require an internet connection, we tested this by turning off our Wi-Fi. Handwriting recognition has become a must-have for note-taking applications, but now Apple has taken OCR from within applications and spread it across iPadOS. This is really amazing because now we can handwrite in applications that would normally type in. This is working for searching through your iPad. It is working in WriteMapper, Agenda, Beer. Scrivener. For those of you guys that don't have keyboards, I think this is really going to be useful. If you ever wish to handwrite your thoughts instead of typing them, but you wanted them in typed format, you are in luck. If you've typed it before, you don't have to anymore. That is super cool. Handwriting is important for most of us because we were taught to process our thoughts by handwriting them. This definitely changes how we create digital notes on the iPad and let us know which you prefer. Do you prefer handwriting your notes and then have them come out as text or would you rather just type them? Scribble comes with some intuitive gestures as well. Circle or strike out to select text. Touch and hold to create space between words. Scribble over text to delete it. Draw a vertical line between words to join or separate them. Scribble is not working on most apps that support the Apple Pencil inking though. That is Notability, GoodNotes, Pages, Word. I'm assuming these applications need to work on avoiding confusion between the two handwriting inputs. If I was a handwriting note-taking application, I would be confused too. For now, you can search through the apps though, and that's pretty cool. Zoom Notes is always impressive. Noteshelf, quite pleasantly surprised. We just recently reviewed Noteshelf if you're interested in the application and we also have complete reviews of Notability and GoodNotes so make sure you check those out in the description down below. The sidebar organization makes sense. Why didn't we have this before? This is definitely a better way to organize your photos, calendars, files. We've had it in files for a while. The sidebar, especially for photos, is really great. You can view photos in your library. You can view favorites. And you can toggle through your utilities, media types, shared albums, and your albums in the application. Dragging and dropping photos across different folders makes it easier to organize our photos in the application. You can hide the sidebar if you don't want it, but the sidebar is very useful and most of us won't be hiding it. Universal search in iPadOS is awesome. Launching apps is now easier. So is searching the web. It can search through your handwriting in Apple Notes. 
I hope we'll be able to search through all our applications using this universal search feature versus scrolling through our iPads because this can potentially save us a lot of time, especially for those of you guys that have documents all over the place. You easily forget where your documents are. Universal search can potentially solve that problem for you. Looking forward to that. The compact call is awesome. What took them so long? Apple makes compact calls sound amazing, but it's really the most logical thing you can have, really. Apple's making in-app subscriptions shareable in family sharing. Thoughtful. This will save us a lot of money, definitely. And perhaps now we can start considering some subscriptions we've been ignoring all along. Obviously, we have an open Apple Notes with good reason. We will go through the changes in Apple Notes in the next video. And in the meantime, <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> Overall, iPadOS 14 has very few upgrades to be excited about. It's great to see Apple focusing on the Apple Pencil, allowing us to do more with it. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let us know what you think about iPadOS 14 in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, you fantastically awesome human being. See you in the next video.